this is crucial guys make sure you take your lube and put it in your hole What's going on everybody and welcome back to the channel so today we're actually doing something on the corvette and i'll go ahead and show you what we got and that is a uh, mgw short throw shifter i got the flat stick version and uh, it's not really something that the car needed but it's something that i wanted to do um just because there's a little bit of slop in the the shifter itself and i'll show you guys that when we start diving into it but i'll go ahead and show you what we got and that is it right there that is our mgw short throw shifter i went with the uh the flat stick version, so it'll use the aftermarket uh, shift ball and not the uh, the factory uh, shift shifter, I guess you'd say. So I went with the red with the black ball. I think it's going to look pretty good. And uh, yeah, let's go a quick overview of what everything came with the kit. So this is their lower box, and you can see everything is nice and metal and secured. And these bushings are not rubber anymore, so should definitely have a way less uh, slop in the in the shifter itself, if any at all. Actually, I don't think it'll have any slop. I think it's gonna be literally solid. So that's pretty good. I mean, this is everything it comes with. So you get your lower, you get your shifter assembly, and the ball itself, and they have this neat little uh, lock nut for it as well, which is, I thought this was kind of nice. Kind of expected it just to be like a standard nut, but it's not, which is really nice. So definitely cleans up the look of it for sure. And this is one of their gaskets. They supply the tooling for it. So you get a nice big Allen wrench in there. Of course, you get a sweet sticker. You know how we like our stickers. Shifter mounting bolts, another piece right here. I think these are for the, uh, the lock nuts for when you put the bolt through here. And then here's the other tool to tighten down the, uh, the lock nut on there. Here's the alignment tool. And then the screws that temporarily hold that as well. And they send out a piece of Dynamat for heat and um, sound dampening, basically. And then some three pieces of foam for the same purpose, I believe. So that's pretty cool. All in all, it's not cheap. But um, in my opinion, this is probably the best shifter out there for Corvettes. Uh, they make them for Mustangs and Camaros. So I would say probably for the Corvette and the Camaro, that's probably the best one you can get. Uh, I'm not sure about Mustangs, but I'm pretty sure... It's also probably the best one you can get, but that's also just my opinion. So figured might as well change it up a little bit. I got some uh, some suede Alcantara shift boots. So it's a shifter boot and then an e-brake boot. I don't know how these are gonna fit, but we're gonna test them out. If they look good, we'll keep them. If they don't, we'll just use factory stuff. All right guys, so here's the stock setup. As you can see, it's not, it's not like a ton of play because right there is where it, you know, you bounce it into neutral, so. It's not a ton of play. Four and a half is all right, right? That's the, the stock throw. Well, let me get in reverse, but. Yeah, it's not, not bad. I want six gear either. Okay, either way. Not bad, but um, yeah, it definitely could be improved upon, so that's what we're doing today. All right guys, quick update, got the center console out. I've not taken it completely off just because um, aftermarket stereo, we got a controller for the, uh, the little USB port right here, which is the Apple CarPlay thing. And then also these wires are pretty long and they run straight back there. And uh, I took them off first time when I changed this out for the original one, it's kind of a pain in the butt. So I'm not gonna do that now, um, but we got plenty of room. All you gotta do is just be careful and disconnect all of your little connections like the uh, traction control you got the uh this one i don't remember um see this is your cigarette lighter your 12 volt and then you got your seat heaters if you have that option and that's it i mean basically that is that's all you need to do take that off there's two bolts on the side but this bracket right here is usually always broken 
So mine is broken. These, this little bracket right here, two bolts here. It's supposed to be attached right here, but it's definitely not, so it's all right. Um, there's two bolts here. If you have the, the version where there's a cutout right here, all you do is pop that cutout out, and then you can get access to these two bolts. But on this version, there's just two holes in the background. So that's what carries that. And uh, you didn't have to take this off, but they're kind of uh, very fragile. So I just took it off anyway in case I bumped into it. And then you got your uh, your hazards right there. So we're done tearing things apart on the center console side. You got to take a little trim piece off here as well. But everything just pulls out. Just be very careful. It is GM old plastic. So I don't want to crack anything because... Corvette stuff surprisingly is not that cheap some things are but most things are not so that's all right we'll just be careful and uh, be very methodical about how we move things so this is a little insulator I guess so we're going to pop that off without tearing it it's pretty dense too and she dirty so we're just going to do that clean it up later so 10 mil, take this off. This is the other boot, which is torn right here. Another common thing they tear, not a big deal. We got replacements for that. So we'll go ahead and pop this off and I'll show you guys what it looks like underneath. All right, so here she is in all her glory. And uh, first thing I noticed is that right there. So that is where we're getting our slop from. I don't know if that's normal or not. But, uh, I mean, that's fine. This is supposed to be super tight. But this right here, you guys notice right there, that little, whatever that is, not supposed to be there. It's supposed to be inside that hole. So, um, yeah, I guess it's just something that goes bad. But uh, it's pretty simple uh, install. So we'll go ahead and take these torque bits out. Same thing with that one as well. Um, I think the only thing it really mentions is just make sure it's in neutral. So she's in neutral. All right, guys, continuing. Have to uh, take these four bolts out of the shifter, the OEM one as well, as long as, the, as well as these two screws. Pop, this, uh, pop the shifter out, pop the cover off, and then what you need to get to is this. This is the OEM uh, shift fork, I think is what they call it. So make sure it's nice and clean. There's no wear grooves or anything. This thing's pretty nice. Just kind of polish in the areas that it gets worn. No big deal. It's pretty normal wear. But... I thought it was kind of interesting. I don't know if the camera will pick this up, but these bolts that GM uses are like triangular and they're tight all the way in. So I don't know. Have you guys seen this before? I've never seen anything like that. So I thought that was pretty neat. But uh, yeah, these just go right here with the shifter. They go in there like that. Kind of hard to do one handed, but you get the point. So take that apart, get to this, and then now we'll go ahead and assemble this in the new lower box and i'll go ahead and show you guys that all right next step you take the bottom cover off so this is actually the bottom of the plate because these mounting holes will be on the other side they'll be on the passenger side so make sure you put your shift fork in the correct way well, i guess you could flip around if you mess it up no big deal all right but yeah take these off uh lube up the uh, bushings put them in with the shift fork go ahead and put your cover back on i'll go ahead and tighten these up and then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so we got our Dynamat installed and then our extra layer of heat shielding installed. They just say to make sure to not overlap so it doesn't interfere with the shifter. So top piece is supposed to go in between these two mounting stuff or, you know, standoffs. And then right at the bottom of that little, uh, whatever you want to call it, this piece right here, the little, little factory thing. And then the bottom piece is supposed to be right on the top of that see no overlap on the there and then this one is not supposed to be above this uh seam line right here so everything looks good so far so we'll go ahead and throw in the uh the lower box Okay, so lower box is installed. They mentioned to install this one first. There's a little keyway on that shaft, so make sure you get that keyway with the bolt through it. I don't think you can put the bolt through it um, if you don't have the keyway lined up, so just be cognizant of that. And then put the other two bolts in there. These are just not really snug down, they're just hand tight. And then I went ahead 
and put the alignment tool. So that is the neutral alignment tool, I guess. Comes with the little hardware and their own little Allen key. So tighten that down. So we're, I guess it just guarantees that you're in neutral, that we don't put it in first gear. And then uh, put the shifter on and then your, your gearing's all messed up. So we're in neutral right now. So I already applied some Loctite to all three of these bolts. We'll go ahead and torque all these down. And then I think it's the, uh, the shifter install time. So this is crucial guys. Make sure you take your lube and put it in your hole. No one likes a dry hole. Remember that. guys so shifters in i put the uh, little protective boot back on they say you don't have to put this on but i mean i don't see why not uh probably just some extra sound dampening i don't know either way but so far i mean this thing is freaking solid i mean short super short throws i mean this thing is yeah it's pretty pretty beefy i mean it's literally that little amount of play it's probably just the ball in the socket itself. So there'll always be a little tiny bit of play, but compared to what we had, I mean, we were going like, that's neutral. And we had that much with the stock one. So uh, definitely pretty impressive. So pretty easy install, just a little time consuming. Overall, pretty easy. But uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and get this thing buttoned up and go take it for a cruise. All right, guys, so we got the flat stick all installed. We got our new suede Alcantara. Uh, shift boot cover and our parking brake cover so it's kind of kind of different kind of classes up the joint a little bit so uh yeah i mean now we'll just uh we'll go take a first spin see how she shifts there you have it that is the mgw flat stick short shifter for a c6 corvette it's the same one that fits a c5 and a c7 though i don't know how you install those probably similar process i would assume but c6 wise super easy and uh it really made a night and day difference like shifting this thing is much smoother uh i really thought I, there was a issue with maybe the synchros and the trans but turns out it was just a bunch of uh, slop and play in the old shifter that was kind of kicking me out of second gear and it was just kind of being a pain to get into gear so um, definitely glad i did this upgrade and uh you know aesthetically i don't think there's a better looking shifter on the market they're not paying me to say this but i truly do think that this shifter is is top notch i mean as you guys can see it goes in every gear no problem at all car off or on which is awesome so if you made it to the end of this video do us a favor guys please hit that subscribe button hit a like and drop a comment down below of what you think about the Corvette, the Camaro, the G8, whatever you want to talk about, throw us it down a comment below and we'll go ahead and respond to you. So thank you so much for watching and thank you so much for subscribing. We'll see you in the next episode.